Hey guys and welcome back to another Python MySQL tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be doing is talking about foreign keys and relating tables together. I'm just going to draw out a quick example here and then we'll get into the code to make sure that you guys understand why and how this works and how we should kind of design and implement a database system using foreign keys. Now the whole point of foreign keys is to allow you to reference one table from another. Now here I have an example where I have a users table and I have a scores table and we'll say that maybe we're designing some kind of game. Maybe this game has, you know, a few different scores that we could store, a few different stats, whatever it is. We want to keep all those stats kind of contained in their own table where we have, you know, like game time played, uh, KD, maybe game one, multiplayer, whatever it is. This is my basic example of the scores table. And we want the user table to store information about the user. So like the name, the username, the password, maybe the date that it was created, whatever information. We don't really want to mix these two tables together and have, you know, the users table storing the scores or having the scores table storing information about the user. We kind of need these to be separate entities. So how can we check what user has which scores if these tables aren't connected in some way? Well, we need to connect them and that's where we use something called a foreign key. Now the concept of a foreign key essentially means that one column, in this case it's going to be our user ID column, in what's known as the child table is going to be the same as the um, column in the parent table. So you can see here I have a column called user ID and I have a column here called ID. Now this user ID column is actually going to be what's called a foreign key which references this ID column. So every time we create a new score what we're going to do is say okay we need to give some kind of user ID here that's going to be the same as one of the IDs in the user table and then we can add the score information. This way if we know one of the IDs, so either the user ID or the user ID here in scores, we can reference both tables. And the way that we can do that is because we know that that if we have an entry in user ID here, there has to be a corresponding entry with the same ID in users. So if we ever look at the scores and we see, oh, you know, like user two has the highest score for game one, I want to display their, you know, username in this table, well, or in this like column of high scores, what I can do is say, well, since two is in user ID, I know there must be a user in the users column or in the users table that has ID two. So I come here, I look for ID two, and then I can say, oh, their name is Joe. This is their username. I can display that kind of information. So I'm hoping this makes sense. Essentially, we're just kind of duplicating a column from one table, which is going to be our parent table, in this case, users, inside of our child table, which in this case is scores, that has the same um, value in it. Now, in this case, our user ID column is going to be unique in scores. So there's only ever going to be one one entry in scores, right? And that means that, you know, this relationship is what we call a one to one in that every single user in our users table here has one corresponding scores entry in the scores table. But there's many cases in which we can have many to many relationships and many to one relationships. Now I'm going to do a quick example of that to make sure you guys understand what that means. So let's try to erase all of this. Okay, so the next example I'm going to do here is a many to one relationship, which means that our foreign keys don't necessarily need to be unique. And you're going to understand what I mean by that in a second. So let's say we're thinking about maybe an application like Facebook or like a blogging application. Well, we might have a table that we call here. I'm just going to make this one a bit smaller. Maybe we call this post. So we have some kind of post, maybe, you know, it's a blog post, it's an Instagram photo, whatever it is. And this post has, you know, its own unique ID. So we'll call that ID. It has a user that created it and it has like some content. Maybe we'll just say this content basically is just some kind of text. That's what it is. We'll, we'll go simple here for this example. Well, we know that a user can have more than one post. And in if we have more than one post, that means that we have to find a way to relate that back to the user. So what I'm going to do is say, you know, maybe we have posts that are ID one, two, three, four, five, and maybe all these posts come from user one or some of them come from user one and some of them come from user two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this user column here is going to be a foreign key that references the user ID. So what I can do is I could say, you know, maybe if posts one, two, and three are from user one, well, in this column, this user column here, all of these IDs are going to be one because they reference the user that posted it. And then here, maybe this one is two and the content, you know, it'll be whatever. It's not really important what that means. But essentially what this is saying is, well, in this column here, we can have many different users that have created a post. And for every user, we have possibly infinite amount of posts, right? That's all that that means. And then from posts, we have every time exactly one user that made that post. So this is what we call a many to one relationship. We say this is one 
and this is star, which means that this could be an infinite amount of posts per user, but there's only ever one user that makes a post. And that's what this relationship means. I can't really explain this more in depth. That's kind of just how it works, but we call this a foreign key. It's not a unique foreign key, but it just references the user column here. So that if we need to, you know, display information about that user on the post, or we need to get that information, then we can simply get that by, you know, just using this ID. Now, say for example, we want to get all of the posts that a user has. Well, all we need to do to do that is say, okay, what is our user ID? Well, that's one. We know that every post that has the user ID of one in our post table here is posted by this user. So let's look through this table for all of them that have that ID. And then that will give us a list of all of the posts that are by that user. And that's kind of the principle and basics of how this work. So now let's get into the code example and start actually creating kind of the first example I did with queries. All right, so now what we're going to do is actually start writing the queries to create the example that we started off with, which was that users and those scores table. So we're going to have that scores table be a foreign key to, um, or not be a foreign key, but have a foreign key that references that user table. So the first thing we need to do is actually create the user table. So whenever we're doing this, we need to make sure that we create kind of the parent table first, the one that's going to be referenced by the other table. Otherwise, you know, there's no way to reference a table if it doesn't exist yet. So we're going to say create table and I'm just storing this in a variable Q1 uh, because I want to just store the query so that we have them after and we can look at them. I'm going to say create table users. We're going to put our parameters now that we need or whatever our columns. I'm going to say name var char uh, 50 and actually before that I'll even put the primary key which will be our ID. So I'm going to say ID int primary key auto underscore increment like usual, then we'll have name, we'll add a password. So we'll say pass w varchar 50. And I mean, we could add some other stuff to this if we want. But I think for now, that's probably fine. And yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, next query. So I'm going to say q2 equals create table scores. And now this is where it gets a bit tricky. So what I'm going to do in scores is actually make the primary key be a foreign key. Now this is kind of advanced and you don't have to do this, but I want to show you that it's possible. So essentially, since we know our relationship is one to one, which means for every score, there's one entry in the users table. And for every user, there's one entry in the scores table. Typically, if we've created an entry, then what we can actually say is that this ID here, that can be our foreign key and it can be the primary key of the scores table because there's only one of them. That's fine to do in our second example where I was talking about. Um, actually, I forget what the example was that I used there. But anyways, in the second example, we had, I guess, posts and we had more than one post per user. So I couldn't use that as the primary key for that table. But since this case, we only have one, we can do that. So what I'm going to do is say uh, user ID int. Then what I'm going to do is make this a primary key. And I'm going to now say and set the foreign key constraint is what this is called. So I'm going to say foreign key. I'm going to put the name of the key in my table. So this current table that I want to be the foreign key. So user ID references references. And now what I'm going to do is put the name of my other table. So users and in brackets, the name of the column that I want to reference, which is ID. So that means that the user ID column here is going to be the same as the ID column from user for whatever users that we have. Okay, the next things that I need here was game one and game two. So I'll just say int uh, game one, int game two. And I'm going to show you something here on how we can actually make a default value for these. So since you know, when we start, we'll probably have a default score of zero, I'm going to say default zero, and default zero, which just stands for that's going to be the default value if we don't decide to set that when we create the uh, the entry in our scores table. Okay, so now that we have that, let's actually run these queries. So let's say my cursor dot execute uh, Q1, and we can do the same thing here on Q2. And see if these work or we get an error, we get an error. Let's see what this is. Oh, so apparently I've been thinking I'm coding in Java and I cannot put int before game one. So I need to put it afterwards. I'm used to defining, you know, the type I've been doing that recently. Okay, so anyways, let's try this now. And Okay, so that actually worked. I know I got an error here. That's just because like, you know, I created the user table and then I tried to create again when I ran this. Um, but I think we're actually good now. And we have these two tables. If we want to do a quick check, we can always describe the tables or we can just, you know, select all from them. So let's just say actually show tables and I will say for x in my cursor 
print x and see if we have our two tables in here and do we we just have the users table which means i need to execute q2 again my apologies on this guys we're just getting kind of confused okay so q2 and now we can do show tables and scores and users okay so we successfully added them in make sure you don't make the same mistake as me and just define the type after you define the reference or the name of that column okay so now that we have that you might have noticed that i have these two lists up here so users and users scores so what i want to do is actually add some users into my users table and then add some scores for them and show you how we can set up this reference and then check and go through them so the first thing that I need to do is well add my users. So to do this, I'm actually going to use a for loop and just loop through all of my users. But I'm going to show you that there's another way to do this. And what I can actually do is run a query that will insert all of these at once. And it's called execute many. So I can say my cursor dot execute many like this. And then in here, I can put a query so I can say insert into in this case users we'll put what we need to insert so we're not going to insert the id but we'll insert the name the past w and then i realize in here i've added an email but i uh, have added some extra values that i forgot to add here so i'll actually just get rid of these and we'll just leave you know the name and uh what is it like a username we'll just say that's the password there that's fine so what i'm doing here is just saying you know this is going to be our username uh, and this is going to be the user password doesn't really matter we'll do that and then we'll say values and in here we'll put percent s comma percent s and then what we're going to do is just simply pass in this list of users so what this is going to do is actually take all of these tuples and it's going to run the query three times so it's going to say insert into users and it's going to insert this one this one and then this one so that's a quick way to do that but what i want to do is actually do this in a for loop and then insert scores at the same time as i insert users so i can show you something else so let's leave this query here we'll call this q3 and we'll just get rid of the brackets here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say for x comma and we'll say user in enumerate users and i'm assuming you guys know how this works but you should understand it in a second i'm going to say my cursor dot execute q3 comma user now what this is going to do is the exact same thing that execute many is doing except we're doing it in a for loop but what i want to do after i create my user is create add these scores into the score table for that user so these scores correspond with you know this is tim's score this is Joe's score, this is Sarah's score. So if I want to insert them in, what I can actually do is I can get the last ID of the user that I inserted here. And then from there, what I can do is use that ID to insert into the scores table. And you guys will see what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna say last ID equals my cursor dot last row ID. Now what this stands for is get the last row ID that was inserted into the table which is actually going to be the ID of the user that we inserted in because it's getting the primary key of whatever the entry is that we just put in. So now that I have the primary key, what I can do is actually insert a score into my score table. So to do this, I'm going to say my cursor dot execute and we'll type the query up here. So Q4 is going to be equal to insert into scores. We're going to need our ID, which we have there, or this is actually user ID, my apologies. And then we're going to have game one, game two, values, and then percent %s, percent %s, and percent %s, if I could type correctly, which apparently I can't. Okay, so now that we have percent %s, there, what I can do is execute Q4. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to say, and this is a this is kind of weird, but you guys should see how this works last comma or last underscore id comma plus and i'm gonna say user scores so user underscores scores x now i know this is kind of advanced uh or some of you might be kind of confused but what this is doing is just simply creating a tuple that looks something like this where we have id and then we have game one score and game two score right after each other it just we're just adding the tuples together that's what this area is doing and this uh user underscore scores x is just going to grab one at a time these scores and insert them in corresponding with the entries that we've added from our users so let's actually run this and then what i'm going to do after this is say my cursor dot execute and i just want to see um, some entries from my user table so i'm going to say select from star from users and then we'll say for x in my cursor 
print x. Okay, so assuming I didn't make any errors, which I probably did, this should work. Let's run this. And we see now that we actually have users in our table. So we have user Tim, tech with Tim, and then we have ID2, Joe, Joe123, and those are our users. Now let's have a look at our other table, which is going to be scores. Now, actually, I realized that I forgot to commit this. So we'll run this again and we'll actually commit this change because if we don't do that, then this isn't going to save. So what we're going to do now is just, you know, the same thing we did before, except this time we'll commit it and then we'll look at scores. So let's run this. And now we can see that our scores, we have ID 4 references 45, 100, ID 5 references 30, 200. And if we look at now the users, so we'll look at scores first and then we'll print out users after, we'll see that these IDs should line up. Now I know this is weird because the last IDs were like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but that's just because I forgot to commit this. So that's why things weren't working, but you guys will see how this works in a second. So we'll say 4x in my cursor, print x. Okay, so. We have a lot of entries in here. <laughs> so we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I realize I've added the same entries twice and we can see that four aligns with four. So that's the score for Tim. We can see five aligns with five, six aligns with six, seven, seven, and so forth. And that is kind of the way that this works. So for each of our users, we have a corresponding table in scores with a foreign key that references the scores for that user. Now in the next video, what I'm going to do is have set up a kind of more complex database with a bunch of different relationships. And I'm going to show you how we can actually host this on a server and connect to it. But for now, this is kind of how foreign key works. Now I know I kind of went through a lot of stuff here. There's a lot to look at but the I, essential idea here is just kind of think about how tables should relate together and you know with that post example when we have something that's many to one well we're going to make sure that we have a distinct primary key and then a different foreign key which could reference the same user multiple times in the same table so anyways that has kind of been it for how to use foreign keys in mysql if you guys have any questions don't hesitate to ask them down below and with that being said i will see you guys in the next video